This is the world of the campus vets. That he's losing weight. Something is up with him. Well, I'm concerned because I realize that if they can't fix this, that we're going to have to put her down. Right now, his biggest problem is his face. Students in the teaching hospital treat any number of species, from the ordinary to the extraordinary. So, if you guys just wanted to have a seat... Amanda Barksay's pet iguana Oscar has been acting out of sorts for weeks. Okay, so this is Oscar. It's Dr. Alana Shrubsoul's first encounter with a reptile patient since she became an intern in exotic and avian medicine. He's very cute. The problem today is the swelling around his eye. Do you want to tell me a little bit about it? Just recently he has gotten bumps underneath and he doesn't eat very much anymore. Adding to the puzzle, Oscar is sleeping a lot. Before he kind of walk around and like he'd actually stay awake. Now he just sleeps. Okay. Hey guys. Hi. Faculty veterinarian Dr. Dedalyn Parker arrives to assess the reptile. So what do you think about him, Dr. Scherzel? I think his face is very asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. Like, I think he's systemically sick. And does he get an ultraviolet light? No. Okay. Dr. Parker suspects the lack of UV light has both weakened Oscar's bones and compromised his immune system, leaving him prone to infection. He needs ultraviolet light in order to take calcium into his body. If Oscar is low on calcium, it will show up in a blood test. Poor little twitchy dude. I think I need to go look the Next, blood. they need to drain the abscesses that are poisoning Oscar's system. Okay. Right now, his biggest problem is his face. And what we need to do is we need to actually open them up. It's not just going to go away. If we just leave it, it's just going to stay there and act like a, a bacterial source for the rest of his body. Any surgery under anesthesia is risky, but it's Oscar's only hope of recovery. This two-week-old baby llama was seriously injured at birth. She's part of a herd owned by Fran and Len Folkert, who sell the llama's fine hair as yarn. But the animals are more than just their livelihood. The couple adore them like pets. They hope the vets at the large animal clinic can heal the baby. The mother's flow and the baby's fantasia and she has a broken leg, and I don't know when it happened. Student Charlene Bergfens hasn't spent much time working with these unusual members of the camel family. It's always a challenge because there's so much to know in vet med, and you know, we don't have a lot of clinical experience yet, so quite often you don't feel very smart because there's so many things you don't know. Staff veterinarian Dr. Kelly McClellan joins in to assess the baby llama. Fantasia isn't putting any weight on her right hind leg. X-rays will reveal the severity of the fracture. Well, I'm concerned because I realize that if they can't fix this, that we're going to have to put her down. That's my concern right now. She's been losing weight and drinking tons of water, so something is up with him. An older cat named Bustopher isn't well, and that concerns his owner. Michelle Mooney. He's really part of our family. So we do whatever we would do for, for our child, you know. This is vet student Katherine Schenkel's first day working at the small animal clinic. Hi, is this Bestifer? This is Hi, I'm Katherine. I'm a fourth year student here at the college. So have you noticed any changes in his urination habits at all? Yes, like he goes to the litter box a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like how have you noticed that he's been drinking a lot of water? Every time when I'm getting ready in the morning, if I've got water in my toothbrush glass, he's drinking that. Okay. Anywhere, yeah, yeah, he can find water, he drinks it. And so how long has it been since you've noticed a change? Oh, like almost three months. He was losing weight, like I can just feel it, just picking him up, that he's losing weight. 
We're just gonna get a weight on him. The scale confirms the cat has lost weight. I think his increased drinking and his increased urination and his weight loss in spite of an increased appetite and those are all kind of things that are concerning. It's too early to diagnose Bustopher's problem, but Catherine knows it could be serious. The x-rays for Fantasia the llama are back. Not only is her femur completely snapped in two, the two pieces have overlapped. She's got a significant amount of bone overriding. You have to pull her leg and all her soft tissues, which have contracted because she hasn't used them since birth. So it'll be a significant amount of surgery for her. When she was born, probably one of the other llamas uh, might have stepped on her. Fran, have you met Dr. Carmel? This is James. Oh, hi there. How are you? Fran is relieved to hear that Fantasia can survive her injury, but only with extensive surgery. It's going to be pretty difficult to get those two pieces to come back into alignment. So what we need to do is take that apart, bring this piece all the way back down, then put the nail in, and then put the cross pins in it. Fantasia is left to rest for the upcoming three and a half hour surgery to save her leg. Catherine has a mystery on her hands. Her patient, Bustopher, is losing weight, despite a voracious appetite. Okay, so, so go, Catherine. it went pretty well. Catherine okay. confers with her supervising veterinarian, Dr. Elizabeth Sneed. Mm -hmm. So this has been going on for about three months, kind of a gradual onset. In cats, I can think of a couple of really important things, three specifically, that you need to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. so, well, in a 12 year old cat, I'd probably put hyperthyroidism. I would okay, my list. so that's a really important differential. What else? Um, I would put diabetes on the list. That would be a very important one. What else? I but suppose you could put weight. GI lymphoma on the Yeah, lymphoma would be a big one. Really common. Right? Bustopher's symptoms could be the result of a number of life threatening illnesses. Dr. Sneed joins Catherine to break the news to Michelle. A couple of problems come to mind. Your kitty could be diabetic, yeah. um, and that would be an easy thing to find out. He could be hyperthyroid, even though we can't feel a nodule. Be the easiest one for us to deal with and treat. Um, the final one, sort of big one that we need to rule out, is kind of a nasty one. Could your kitty have some type of cancer? As Oscar is about to undergo surgery, his blood test results come back. Yeah, it was uh, unfortunately what we were suspecting, a, a hypocalcemia, so a low calcium level. So he's a very sick little guy. Once he's anesthetized, we're gonna inject in some fluids and some calcium, and hopefully that'll help him immediately. The lack of calcium weakened the iguana's immune system, resulting in abscesses the vet team will now attempt to drain. We can get him over this, so we can hopefully get rid of the infection. He'll probably always have some facial it's abnormalities. It's very thick, rubbery. Alana is surprised to find the infection is more widespread than she thought. He has three abscesses, which we cleaned out. We're just going to leave them open, and hopefully his body will uh, have a better immune system going on, and then he'll be able to, to fight it off. Usually under anesthetic, they get colder than normal. So I'm bringing pot water bottles uh, to help keep this guy warm. And now we wait. The anesthesia department prepares Fantasia for the surgery on her broken leg. Once she is asleep, she won't be able to breathe on her own. Student Elizabeth Corey attempts a procedure called intubation inserting a breathing tube into the trachea. It's a tight fit. You know what a forceps so it should be guided, basically. Yeah. We attempted to intubate, but um, since their mouth doesn't open that wide, it ended up going down the esophagus instead of the trachea, so we are going to re-intubate and try again. With Fantasia due in surgery, the anesthesia team has no time to waste, but finding the trachea on such a long, skinny neck is proving to be difficult. A blood test will determine whether Bustopher has diabetes, a possible explanation for his sudden weight loss. 
But if diabetes is ruled out, it could be something far worse. The worst case scenario would be that he would have cancer, and that's the thing that, you know, you always have to keep in the back of your mind. So we'll just have to wait until lab work comes back and see what that tells us and then go from there. Fantasia's long, narrow neck has complicated the team's efforts to insert a breathing tube into her lungs, called intubation. Finally, success. Still, the procedure could have inflamed the larynx, making it difficult for Fantasia to breathe once she is out of surgery. They will have to monitor her closely. So we know finally just succeeded in intubating her. Now that Fantasia is heading into surgery, student Charlene Berkvins is back in the picture. This is her first time in large animal surgery. I don't know how much I will be allowed to do, but I'll scrub in and observe and hold anything. Anesthesia, I'm cutting. The surgical team needs to locate the shattered bone in Fantasia's hind leg and restructure it. Lay your fingers on the shell and just kind of pull that muscle back. Just not a whole bunch of tension, just roll it back. Okay. First, they will shorten the two jagged ends of bone so they will realign properly. This is an intramedullary nail, and this is what is going to go into the bone, and then the screws will be through it, like so. A fluoroscope provides real-time x-rays so the surgical team can see the nail installed inside the bones. Looks pretty sweet. A jig helps them line the screws up with the pre-drilled holes in the installed nail. There is no room for error. I just wanted to make sure, Charlene, that, that the holes that we can see on the jig are the actual holes that we need to use. We're only going to get one chance to drill those holes. Okay. Warmed up and abscess-free, Oscar the iguana is ready to go home. We got the blood work back. He has really, really low calcium. Okay. Like, <laughs> kind of scary low. Okay. So when he was under, we decided to give him a little bit of calcium, and that's actually why I think he has so much more energy <laughs> now. Um, because he has such low calcium, his bones right now are really, really fragile. So it's pretty important how you handle him. We're giving you an antibiotic, which will help fight off the infection. And if you get him a UV light, then that should be what he needs. He needs a UV light to help him absorb the calcium. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> He's great. Good luck. Next, a dog with swollen eyes mystifies the vet team. John Bryant is the official owner of a dog named Ozzy. But his dad, Ed, is just as attached to the two-year-old mixed breed. Well, you can come home at the end of the day and have a terrible day. You just feel rotten. But that old dog is there with the tail wagging to meet you when you come in the door. There's nothing better than that. Eh? Practically overnight, the young dog's eyes became swollen. My dad got home from work, and he told me about it. And he was kind of worried. And of course, just like human eyes, you know, if they're swelled or something like that, you want to take them in and get them checked out. Hi, how are you doing? Hi. I'm Dr. Finster. What are you doing, handsome? He apparently got in a scuffle a couple days ago with a cat. Intern Dr. Sharon Finster knows cat scratches could explain the swelling, but so could glaucoma, a disease that could leave a dog blind within 24 hours if left untreated. Dr. Finster must sort through the clues and solve the puzzle of Ozzy's eyes. Down the hall, Michelle waits anxiously for the results of her cat's blood test. All right. So, based on the results that Catherine and I have been going over, um, your kitty does have diabetes. That's better than if your cat had cancer, but it is going to involve us talking to you about how we treat diabetes and what's all involved. Typically, diabetic cats are insulin dependent, so mm -hmm. your kitty will need regular shots of insulin, and mm -hmm. it's a very small needle, and we'll teach you how to do it. Well, I'm happy that it's something we can fix, because if it would have been the, the cancer diagnosis, like this, what can you do, you know, that would have been terrible. 
You know, he's like my child. I would do that for my child. If my child got insulin dependent diabetes, I'm not going to put him to sleep, you know, euthanize him. So this is, this is so manageable compared to what I thought I'd be dealing with. No, I'm very happy. And I think he might actually purr for me here. <laughs> Now I'm going to put some green stuff on his eyes to see if he has any scratches or such. Intern Dr. Finster and student Heidi Potter hope a series of ophthalmologic tests will reveal the cause of Ozzy's swollen eyes. We stained his eye to look for any stain uptake, which would indicate that there was disruption of the outer layer of the cornea. And I knew that he had been in a cat scuffle, um, and so I was worried about corneal ulceration. If the corneas are scratched, they'll soak up the stain, becoming visible under a special blue light. So I don't see any stain on tape, I don't see any stain Test after test reveal no abnormalities. You bump this on the, the oh. surface of the eye and it measures how much pressure there is, like the same thing as like a tire pump. 17 on the right, 18 on the left. The dog's eye pressure is not abnormally high, which rules out glaucoma. Dr. Finster wonders if he's suffering from an allergic reaction, a rare occurrence during autumn. He could have gotten into something that irritated both his eyes. Dr. Finster decides to consult with the on-call ophthalmology resident. He did get in a squabble with a cat uh, about a week ago, but I can find no evidence of any ulceration. I can find no fingernails, nothing. His corneas look great. His iris looks great, everything. It could be allergies, but it's kind of a weird time. Yes, yeah, sure. Good job. Everything keeps pointing to an allergic reaction, but what could be the catalyst? <laughs> Student Charlene Berkvins is two hours into the operation on Fantasia's leg. The final screws are now in place, and it's time to close her up. So how else can we assess whether the surgery was a success? Other than watch her see if she's weight bearing this in a couple days? Uh-huh. This has been a very stressful ordeal for her, so we also need to make sure she's nursing because if she's really painful and she doesn't get up and nurse, then she's going to be hypoglycemic. Okay. Perfect. I'm looking forward to seeing her up and running around again. But as the team starts to revive Fantasia, she's having trouble breathing. If she's going to have any swelling now, then, you know, let's watch her and yeah, get some baseline data on her before anything goes wrong here. Taking no chances, they move Fantasia to the intensive care unit to monitor her recovery. She had some laryngeal and arytenoid trauma, which is the opening to her trachea. So there's some concern right now that if that swells, then it could cut off her airway. Ed and John Bryant wait for the diagnosis on their dog, Ozzy. His swelling eyes have left Dr. Finster puzzled. She turns to the on-call ophthalmology resident for advice. I just called her just to make sure that I wasn't missing anything and to make sure that we were on the right track. Thanks. Bye. Differentials for this, potentially a bee sting, but we don't see any other swelling. All right. An allergic reaction to an insect sting is a long shot, but Dr. Finster thinks it's worth pursuing. Any chance you could have been stung by a bee? Yes. Oh. He was catching wasps on the weekend. Okay. Uh, he was out in the yard with me, and he probably went after five or six of them, and he caught them, and he was chewing and spitting them out, and I think he swallowed a couple. So, uh, yeah, he got stung a few times. I am suspicious that he actually got stung by a wasp somewhere and is having a bit of an allergic swelling in that tissue. Um, we sent him home on a topical non-steroidal anti-inflammatory. If it doesn't get better in the next day or so, he needs to come in and have a further workup. If Ozzy can curb his appetite for wasps, he'll likely be on the road to recovery in no time. See ya. After an anxious hour in ICU, Charlene and Elizabeth are relieved to see Fantasia's condition improve. Well, she's warming up, and her breathing's good, and hopefully she can go back to mom by five. 
probably take out the oxygen line. She doesn't need it. She's breathing pretty well. Five days after surgery, Fantasia's owner Fran is ecstatic to see the baby llama up on her feet. All four of them. She obviously is doing well. I noticed that she was walking on her, her leg, and I haven't seen her do that before without pain. It was great to have a happy ending, for sure. It's kind of sad to see her go, because she's such a cute face to see every morning. Llamas and alpacas tend to defecate in piles called dung piles. And if they don't have a dung pile, they don't feel as comfortable defecating. So we're going to put some feces that she deposited in here in her stall and then hopefully she'll use that pile. This is the glamorous part of the job.